Hey everyone, this is Luminous, coming to you guys with a pro digital commentary. Today I'm casting a game from the ESTC, which stands for Electronic Sports Thailand Championship. A game between Minsky or Mineski on Sensino and uh, MOV on Scourge. Mineski obviously from Philippines and MOV from Thailand. And this is an ongoing LAN um, that's going to last for a couple days, I believe. So that should be very exciting to see some Southern East Asian games. And if you guys are not familiar with Philippine Dota, the good old analogy that Philippine Dota is just like Tentacle Hentai. The first time you watch it, you will, your mind will be blown. But if you do end up keep watching it, it is, it is beautiful. It's artful, and uh, it's some is something extraordinary. So let's leave it at that. Which, by the way, if you guys believe it or not, I have never seen any Tentacle Hentai. I told that joke once, and apparently, like I'm, I'm the Tentacle Hentai master. The, the the closest thing I got to Tentacle Hentai was Iga Musume, and that had a lot of tentacle, but no hentai there. So I'm sure no one, no one will believe me, but let me leave it at that. Niski on Sentinel, MOV on Scourge, and we do see the Lycan being banned, Earthshaker being banned on the Scourge side. Looks like the ban are slowing down. So I'm gonna tell you about my day today because this is relevant to. The cast right now. I have a paper due today, or I had a paper due today, and uh, you know it's like okay, no, no problem. Pressure, pressure level zero. And it's like oh, I don't have the book spot yet, so how am, how am I gonna quote from the books? Because I'm supposed to do the reading, and MP drove to the library, bought the book, came back, twelve o'clock, stress, stress level zero, still at noon. And then, uh, you know, 3 o'clock during the day was reading some, watching Hasunu Miku on YouTube. Haven't wrote a thing yet. Stress level zero. No problem. After dinner at 6, uh, you know, maybe start brainstorming a little bit because it is getting close to the 12th 12, 12, uh, night deadline. So brainstorm, you know, got my all my information ready. At 7 o'clock, start writing. Stress level zero. Bam! Three hours later, five-page paper done. Everything looks good. Have my headers, titles, everything looks perfect. And then I gave it to my uh, proofreaders. Like, hey, you gotta help me out. Uh, just, just proof me. It would take you ten minutes. It's a rather short paper. And the guy was proofreading while watching a game from ESTC. And safe to say, the proofread took like over an hour and thirty minutes. And my stress level was rising, man. It was rising. I was like, oh my god, my paper done. Just, just proofread it. <laughs> ah, man. Now I'm done with the paper, and I was so worried today. I was like, can I do my one commentary a day? I'm going to do it, because this is luminous. Don't back off from promises. Let's go back in the game, right? We have Mineski banning the the Wolf, the Invoker, and the Lich. Meanwhile, a Scourge banning the Shaker, um, Brewmother, and the Shadow Demon. So Ancient Apparition right in the pole. Let's see if that's going to be the first pickup. I doubt it, because it's a strong hero, but... It, you know, most times, most many games in the past have said uh, the big weakness with that hero is, is requires setup. He, he also requires some sort of laning. You can't really put him as a support. Not not that good as a roamer. It requires you know f leading stuns. Needs quite a bit of EXP. So overall, a very strong hero, but definitely not worth the first pick. Well, we do see some teams first pick it, but you know, I think that comes down to team choices. As you see, MOV here taking a little bit of time in terms of first pick. There's some very good heroes still in the pool. Ancient Operation, as mentioned, Bat Rider is definitely worth that first pick. Um, you could go into a Spectre first pick. We've seen some European team do that. And Spectre does have a pretty good win rate, even if you pick it first. Even as a carry, uh, she becomes a difficult to counter. I mean, like, just think in your mind who, who counters Spectre hard? Can you think of any? There's very, very few heroes that counter Spectre hard. Um, I mean, you can't really stop her from farming because she has Spectral Dagger, she has Dispersion, uh, and she could KS with Haunt. And it's going to be a Juggernaut, right? Standard first pick. I'm just kidding. This is not a standard first pick at all. I have no idea why MOV pick up Juggernaut first, other than that he is the coolest hero probably in Dota. Um, MOV actually took a bit of time, so this is not a misclick, I, I, I suppose. Uh, and I suppose this is a prepare strat, and Mineski over here is like, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're familiar with seeing DK, we're familiar with seeing with Quat first pick, but Juggernaut first pick. Let's talk about Juggernaut, because this is probably the only t only time I'll ever talk about Juggernaut in a pro commentary, so 
Juggernaut is one of my favorite heroes to play because he's very, very quick. He's very mobile. He's one of the few semi carries that is very, very strong in laning and ganking as well. So there's many versatile ways to play him. And with that buff on the healing war, you could even use him as a pushing hero. Uh, we didn't definitely see Navi done that in one or two games. So that's definitely very, very fun. There's multiple item builds that you could go for, go on him. Um, you could go for like a face boot low dart for more of a ganking kind of initiating build. Or you could go for more of a semi carry build such as the um, treads into some attack speed item into a butterfly mkb just generics carry item um, of course the laning with the juggernaut is really nice as well if you do pick up the crystal maiden uh, you have a very very strong killing dual lane you could even go boots first with the juggernaut it's definitely not unseen before so very strong hero overall he does lack a little bit of late game carry power but aside from that i i, I think he's a very very decent hero and let's see how mov is going to be playing it this game now on the sentinel side we do see ferion as the leading pick here and conjunct in conjunction with the Crystal Maiden, um, I think the Crystal Maiden was picked sort of as as a not really a counter pick, but I think they picked it so that the Scourge don't pick it up because, like I said before, Crystal Maiden plus Juggernaut is an insanely combo. I think that has to be uh, one of the few reasons I picked it. The other reason might be they just want the aura, maybe they want an offensive lineup that goes through the mana pool rather quickly so do you want the crystal maiden to help her replenish a little bit crystal maiden isn't too bad per se against juggernaut if you could drop the nova before he spins uh, the slow buff will be still on him uh, unfortunately if you do frostbite the juggernaut the juggernaut will just spin it away so no problem there we do see pugna being second picked up so i'm not too sure why they didn't pick up pugna first or another another hero probably that even deserve a better first pick but hey whatever in terms of the what Sentinel, I think what they're trying to do is uh, with the first two pick, you can go a little bit more ganking oriented. It, does, it depends on whether that fearing is coming out from the jungle, or you could go a little bit more pushing oriented. But no, we see Scourge right opening it up with the uh, Dirge as well. So this is this is non-standard to say the least. So this is some strong, very very strong pushing power. Whenever you have the combination of the Pugna Ward and the Tombstone, basically you secure yourself a huge area. In a, in, on like if you're fighting next to Roshan, if you're fighting under Tao, you drop down those two artifacts on the ground, and and they just have to give up that fight because if you're casting spells, you're getting zapped. If you're trying to right click, the tombstone's right on you. So it's just a whole bunch of stuff that you have to worry about, and they even have to add Blade Fairy. Uh, to, to scare you away as well. So just a lot of crowd control and a sp specific AOE. So I think that's what MOV is going for. They are most likely using these picks to push down towers, engage in specific areas. And this, this team fight lineup will be definitely very, very scary if it ever pushed down into your base like you just drop tomb drop the pugna war and run in with blade fury in the front what do you do i don't know they could actually drop down a healing war as well so a whole bunch of stuff in the way uh, that really makes a fight a lot easier for scourge is that what scourge is going for like just wards and stuff are they gonna pick up a venom answer if they do that will be baller venom answer and wish doctor right just war strat sick war strat plus tomb right <laughs> but uh, i i don't know if that's the case uh we do see potom being picked up by Mineski. Just a general good mobility hero, uh, good for escaping that decrep blast, good for escaping the blade fury, and also leaping out of tomb combos or just tomb area. Uh, so just a good mobility hero. I think what Sentinel is going for, judging from the first three pick, is ganks. Uh, they have the free on for the global TP. Crystal made and definitely a very very strong ganker, uh, having dual disables in the early stage of the game. Uh, pretty strong nuker if you do level up that uh, AOE Nova. And now the bottom being picked up. So another two nukes being picked up. So very, very nuke heavy on Sentinel. That is going to do a little bit of damage to the Pugna. Considering that he's a very, very weak overall hero. But I think because Sturge is around uh, and, and Juggernaut is around. There's enough healing to go around for to keep everyone alive. Even despite all of all these nukes. So I think Miniski so far they have the more standard lineup. But I think I, I'm liking the MOV lineup a little bit more. Of course they do have two melee. And both Juggernaut and the Undyne generally goes on the trial lane or, or at least the dual lane. So I, I, the laning is going to be a little bit awkward for MOV as well. I'm curious what they're going to end up doing. Uh, we do see Tinker being banned and the uh, Clockwork. I think these bans are gearing towards Turtle or Anti-Turtle. They want to get rid of it because both Tinker and the uh, Clockwork are very, very strong against pushing and turtling, pushing teams in general. Excuse me. Of course, if you are high enough level Tinker, you could just uh, drop down the uh, Clockwork Goblins and that just destroys 
destroy his pushes very very easily and considering if you look at the first three picks of scourge they don't have any kind of strong initiator they don't have a venge yet uh, they don't have some kind of like a beast master yet where you could just isolate the tinker and kill him very quickly uh, so they just want to get rid of it overall of course the clockwork gives you that scout it gives you the hook in initiation against the pugna if you ever pick him off before the team fight start that's a very very huge uh, advantage that you could claim so uh, very smart ban overall although there's pretty good counter pushing hero still left in the pool um, so I'm not too sure whether that is the only reasons uh, that they're picking uh, oh yeah one thing about Tinker that is very very strong in counter pushing as well as if you ever want to pick up a soul ring you just you know soul ring missile rearm soul ring missile rearm and you can stay very very far back and just annoy the hell out of the pushing lineup uh, we do see a very very smart ban by Miniski, right they're seeing this war strat coming in they're like okay let's ban a venomancer because obviously that's what they're going for but I think what Scourge could be doing right now is picking up a Witch Doctor or a Ventral Spirit. Both these heroes very, very strong in terms of pushing. Of course, Witch Doctor gives you that heal, gives that cast to drive everyone back. Um, and Maledic is not going to be too important as a as a uh, spell, but definitely the heal. In conjunction with the Healing Ward, in conjunction with that Soul Rip heal, it's just a lot of healing to go through. But um, I... It's very dangerous to go over here at this point because you notice that Ancient Apparition is still in the pool and the fact that the Scourge didn't ban it. So I, I'm assuming they don't want to go heal oriented. Uh, but Witch Doctor is still very strong as a pushing hero that casts bouncing like crazy. Uh, Ventral Spirit also a very good pushing hero because it gives you some of the more, um, I guess, intrinsic things like the sight of, with the terror, the swap to go high ground. That's definitely very, very important. If you ever pick up a Furion, pick off a Furion, uh, with a swap that you, you know their team fight goes very, very smoothly as well so uh, i'm wondering what support they're going to be picking they're running down on time 18 seconds in <laughs> and they're like okay let's take it slow we know we want to pick juggernaut number one but we don't know what support we want to pick oh god it's going to be aslar okay so very very strong support in terms of pushing in terms of rejuvenate rejuvenating your mana and also the very underestimate ability of recall uh, and blind as well. Blind's gonna be good against Furion and the Potom, uh, but mostly it's gonna be taken for the Chakra Magic and the Illuminate. And right now, Miniski is is up against a very very strong push. And let's see how they're gonna be defending defending this. Uh, some of the stronger push your hero pushing hero that they could consider. They they have two ways to go about this. You could kill off creeps very quickly, which against most pushing lineup it would be good uh, because. You know, hey, you can't push without your creeps. But if you look at this lineup, right, there's tombs, there's pregnant wards, there's, you know, healing wards down. Like, it's it's, it's just hard alone to kill off the, those creep waves, uh, you know, without sustaining too much damage. So the second way to do about it is pick a hero that's tanky enough to destroy those artifacts. It's going to be hard, but there's some heroes in the pool that may be able to do it. Solo Bear is one contender because you can always send the bear in, even send the hero in to, you know, take down the pregnant ward, take down the tombstone. Um, depending on positioning, depending what kind of backup you have. Um, the second hero you can consider is Night Stalker. Definitely a very, very tanky hero overall. You could run in. You are going to sustain some damage. Don't get me wrong there. But uh, if you could get rid of those wars, if you get rid of those uh, um, Tombstone, you make the team fight so, so much easier. If you look at what the Scourge got right now, they got zero stuns and they are going to go for the second route. They're going to do the uh, Bristol back, which is going to be very, very tanky. One kill, Krill Spray is going to kill all the zombies, so very, very strong counter pick in that regard. And also, he is tanky enough to go in and kill down that Putnam War, kill down the Healing War, and even work on the Tombstone. And the problem with the Scourge lineup is they have zero stuns. And against the mo if, if, if Miniski picks a very mobile hero on the last pick, let's say a Weaver of some sort, they won't pick up the Weaver, but I'm just saying, for example, if they pick up a mobile hero, let's say like a Weaver, or for a Windrunner, that wouldn't be a bad pick. Um, they could just dance all around the Scourge team, and their Scourge can't do anything about it. I feel like Scourge need to pick up a very, very strong Disabler at this point of the game. Cask wouldn't be bad, because it's one of the few heroes I could... One one spell. No, it's gonna be Venge. Strong disabler. Uh, but I you know, I think Rasa might have been better or Witch Doctor might have been better. But they are gonna go with Avenge, which is gonna be fine. In terms of laning, uh, this is gonna be very interesting as well. How are they gonna be laning this? Are they gonna do like a like a Kado Dirge or a, an Avenge Juggernaut? I guess that work. 
they could try lane with a Kado or try lane with a Juggernaut and put one of the melee solo top. That works as well. This is going to be very, very odd. Uh, I guess you could, go, you could do like a cool dual lane with like Mana Leak plus Juggernaut Spin. But I think the, the, the Kado in this lineup is really dependent on Chakra and, and uh, Luminate. So I don't think he will be picking up Mana Leak too early in the game. Uh, Mineski taking full... Man, this pick stage is going on for so long, right? This is a 15 minute pick stage. Both teams down to the wire using all their time. And we're seeing some very, very creative picks and, and I like it so far. And it's gonna be a bad end. Okay, uh, this game we have... <laughs> All right, okay, it's gonna be a bad. Let's talk about Bristleback. Let's talk about a bad in a little bit. Bristleback is picked for the Tombstone mostly. Of course, I talked about his ability to tank up quite a bit and go and destroy the art, uh, destroy the map artifact. He also could bully some of the heroes around because they have overall pretty low armor. Pugna for one, Ezlar for another. If they continue to get stack crossbow on top of them, they will just go down very, very quickly. So uh, the damaging aspect, the tanking aspect of the Bristleback is very, very strong. And uh, now we have this Abaddon. Abaddon we haven't seen in the pro games forever. Uh, there was stage, I think it was like 6.5354 where Abaddon was picked a lot because I think a Fodic Shield had like 700 range or 800 range then. And then they swapped the uh, the range of a Fodic Shield and the uh, Death Coil around. Now the Death Coil has a really good range and a Fodic Shield doesn't. And the Fodic Shield is probably one of the best spells in the game, no joke. Uh, of course, it gives you that trigger heal, uh, trigger heal ability, and then uh, it will allow you to you know block damage. But the more I think Sentinel was suspecting a Roshan, yeah, that's why they were checking it out. Um, but the more important thing is a Fodic Shield debuffs a lot of spells. Let's say you get stunned by a Devenge, you can't cast a Fodic Shield on him immediately, and this Venge stun just absolutely goes away. And of course, you get a little bit more tanking without Fodic Shield. Uh, the, the the only thing that's really really horribly bad about that spell is this, it has a 400 cast range, and for the most, or is it was it 300? It's ridiculously low cast range, and for the most part, you either you have to be right there to cast a spell or you're not going to be doing anything. Of course, if you guys want to go very mechanic, like really like ultra mechanic, there's a very cool mechanic uh, aspect that the Sentinel could do is Aphotic Shield plus Bristleback. Both these spells are what, what we call trigger healing. And if you have, t if you stack two trigger heal spells together, uh, then you, in instead of them doing damage to you, when they hit you, you actually regain HP. I have no idea why, whether that's the case uh, when, when they pick these two heroes together. I assume not. Uh, but if, if that, that's what they have in mind when they're picking these heroes, that, that's got to be the most baller thing I've ever witnessed. But it's going to be a Juggernaut, a Ventral Spirit, and a... Uh, and the Ezlar, and this killing link is so strong, and I think that's what uh, what Sentinel recognized. Like, you know what? If they land a stun on us, we are done, because we're gonna take a Blade Fairy, we are gonna take a Luminate, and what what is uh, what is a bad and good for? Hey, you land a stun on us, on us I drop a Fatic a Fatic Shield, and uh, your stun duration goes away immediately. And guess what? You only have one stun to work with, so we just need one Fatic Shield to keep us safe. So this abandoned pick is actually very very strong it works out very nicely but they're gonna take a luminate to the face here are they gonna go on the uh bristleback no they're not i think bristleback uh, i wonder what he what skill he took he should be taking bristleback at level two because uh you, you definitely won't be going off on the, on the offensive with the nasal ghoul so you're gonna be taking the bristleback for a little bit more defensive capability crystal maiden uh, just uh, went to the mid lane to get a gank off uh i think he is successfully keeping the pugna back quite a bit part of my full hp at this point pugna already out of reach Gen. I think Pugna might have saved for a quick bottle as we see who's got to be very careful if he eats an arrow he is going to be dead right now Pugna's gold is at 600 gold so he is going to be sending himself a bottle very quickly right now we have the crystal maiden coming in and crystal maiden is the hero got to be very careful yes you do have a photic shield to protect you but she is a very slow moving hero and if juggernaut gets a spin off uh, she is dead Fodic Shield or not, right? Uh, Juggernaut is level 2. Let's see if you pick up stats or no, just the healing ward as expected because again, this lineup is based around that healing ward, based around having so much stuff on the ground to assist you in that early game engagement, the mid game pushes. So picking up the level of the healing war is very important. A Fodic Shield being casted right now on the Lord of Avernus and I dislike that decision because that is their only save. Oh, this tombstone a little bit misplaced here as we see Tower focusing on it immediately. Uh, we do see the uh, zombie and the illuminate 
destroying quite a bit of creep waves. Uh, the zombie, very, very low HP right now, but the, the smaller zombie going against Abaddon. Abaddon and Father Shield already down. He's a very low HP, but no boots to speed on the Juggernaut, so he's not going to get the uh, kill on the Lord of Vernus right now. We have a little bit more engagement going on here as well. The Bristleback at quarter HP, but he's doing so much damage. Here we go. Bristleback is going to take. Wow. He's going to be okay. Continuous amount of healing, and he is going to turn around to get the first blood there. Very well done. Is he going to keep going? The uh, the Dirge got to be very careful. Two more Krill Spray. He is going to be dead. One more Krill Spray, and he's going to be dead. They are really underestimating the offensive power of this Bristleback, especially in early stage of the game. Unfortunately, we don't have an extra Nova coming from the Crystal Maiden. That would have been at least, that would have been triple kill for sure. Of course, uh, Ezra showing uh, how, how, how good he is with that Illuminate shooting one up uh, from, from his behind we do have an invisible pugna coming in level three so the decrypt blast isn't too strong i'm not too sure whether he even took ward at level one without the assist with his teammate he can't really do too much so he's gonna hide here as his uh Invisible runs out. Yeah, he's not even going to come in again. As he TP's right back to the mid lane. And because of that, the bottom got a little bit more free for him. In level 5 already to a level 4 almost. Yeah, level 4 Pugna now. And you can see that bottom now leading. Of course, standard Miniski play. Standard Philippine play. Bottle curling like a champ. Bottle curling like a champ. So, going to be utilizing that star far for harass. And also for that farm. So, very, very well done there. Looking at top lane here. Haven't looked at it at all. It is going to be the Dirge uh, on the top lane. Uh, Dirge actually went a TP down, <laughs> of course, and to join that fight, but they even so they lost that fight there. As we see a little bit more engagement going on there as well. They really wanted that tower. Wow. Yeah, they really wanted that tower to, to get a push off. They, they sent four at bottom, but unfortunately, the Bristleback was too strong in terms of defending it. And uh, not only did they not get a tower pushed off, they gave up first blood on the Vang, so very unfortunate there. And now Bristleback very close to finishing his Vanguard, and once he does finish his Vanguard, you could kiss whatever offensive of power you have goodbye. Because uh, Bristleback is probably one of the strongest counter pick against this lineup. We have a teleport coming in from the Fear right now. Who is he backstabbing? Uh, these guys have got to be very, very careful. One good thing that the Scourge does have against the uh, Fear on teleport is that the, the Tombstone can destroy trees. Uh, once it's casted so that can be a pretty good way to get out of it especially you know in a semi-large engagement where he traps a, traps avenge or something like that you could just drop to him and that is going to be the end of sprout yeah but on the top lane here we have the Firion at 25 and 5 against dirge at 12 and 5 of course dirge made a little bit of excursion to the bot lane so did pugna so oh looks like pugna is going to go down to the constant harassment of the of the um Oh, we have a teleport coming in from the Freon. Freon is going to get one kill right now. Going for the second kill. is tanking the tower right now. Casting Illuminate is that... Yes, he does get the Illuminate off. But unfortunately, not going to get the kill. Crystal Maiden got the kill there. So very good recognition by the Freon. Ulting it and then TP right into grab two kills right now. That chick... The life of that chick just flashed in front of his eye. Arrow going to be cast on the Pugna, doing quite a bit of harass. And uh, what I was saying earlier before the engagement happened is when you have a bottle crawling hero... Pot of, bottle crawling and bottom in this case you just harass so hard with your spells and uh, you don't you don't have to leave the lane to lose the xp to grab the runes of course grabbing the rune is always nice uh, but if you really care about lasting if you really care about uh, lane controlling um, bottle crawling is going to be epic as you see you see bottle crawling right now he's got two wraith bands got the boost of speed that means he's going to be uh, doing a little bit more early game action. Because if you're going to be saving for a little bit more mid game item. You just go for the Blade of Alacrity. Go for that Yasha or the Diffusal Blade. But seeing that he's picking up a lot of Wraith Bands. You know he's going to be go going a little bit more early game action. And because he had the bottle. He's going to be regening quite a bit as well. Using the bottle. Okay I was thinking he was using the bottle to, to even pick up the runes. No it's going to be the Pugna that picked up the rune. Regen rune is going to keep him in lane if he doesn't die. And that's a big if. Because against a bottom, uh, which is already very very high level at this point level seven yes max starfall at this point a double starfall does way by the way does 460 magical damage that is just absolutely insane against a very low hp here like this so that's uh, that's an issue there uh we do see profit has the midas finish there uh, so overall, I feel like this game so far is going very much so in favor of Mineski. They have the better laning, a very smart pick of the 
Bristleback, very smart pick up a bat. I can't, I can't believe I'm saying this because these are some of the heroes that we never see. But in this game, working out very nicely. We do have a decay being casted. They need to drop down the tombstone right on that crystal maiden. No, he's not. I, I don't know what they're waiting for right now. Crystal maiden half HP. If he drops down the tomb, he's dead. Where's the tomb? There's the tomb. The teleport is coming right now. Oh, actually, the nuke from the Furion doing so much damage right now. We have the Venge going down as well, but the Luminate does finally bring off the Bristleback. I think the Dirge is going to go down. No, yes, the Dirge is going to go down to that TP in from the Furion. Yes, he does go down. And now we have the Pugna. Might be in trouble as we see a low HP Lord of Vern is scaring everyone away. Pugna comes around. Is he going to get a blast off? No. Oh, there is the heal. There is a blast. One more hit. Yes. And that is the that is the kill right there. Now, Furion coming right now trying to get a kill against the Keeper of Light. Keeper of Light should be fine right now. We do have Pugna. Healthy amount of mana at this point. One more blast. Two more blasts left in him. And Juggernaut comes in. He still doesn't have his ultimate right now but bristleback is here and that is cue for the entire scourge to back the heck up because this bristleback i mean he will kill you before you nuke him down he, he's chasing right now Furion doing some expert blocking some life drain going on right now and he's actually wow you can see the life drain can't even compensate for the huge damage output crystal maiden drops oh for the slow and the juggernaut dies the eventual spirit dies meniski off to a beautiful start 11 and 2 and I gotta say, this game is almost out of reach for the Scourge. As we see, a long-range arrow hits the Undying, and this Potom is gonna get himself another kill. And even might be the uh, the Tomb kill there as well, as we see the Bristleback gonna be farming those zombies like a champ. And the reason I say that the Scourge team is really, really out of reach of this game, of course, the score is 11, a 12 to 2 at this point. And, and that's not, I mean, that's not really an impossible, like, you can't, it's 12 of 2, but, you know, we, we definitely seen games uh, that are turned around. Of course, if you remember M5 versus Na'Vi, uh, definitely uh, Na'Vi went down 11 to nothing, and they still won. Uh, I mean, you can still win games, even though you're down by a lot, but I don't think this lineup can. Because if you look at this lineup, they need levels. They need so much level. Dirge needs, like, at least level 12, 13. Uh, same thing with Pugna. You want to have max rewards, max the crep. Venge, of course, you want the high level of the swap. The Juggernaut, if you're going for a pushing strat, you, you need high level wards, you need high level spin, you want to have, oh, he's level 4 right now, by the way. And uh, where is the last hero? Uh, the uh, Keeper, of, of course, you need a max Chakra, you need max Lume, and a couple levels of your, oh, and the Mana Leak. So, you want so many levels, that because they are down by 10 kills, they're not going to get those levels. Uh, so, they need to have something magical to happen, and if it doesn't, they're going to be in huge trouble. So, we see Tombstone drop down, but this, this, uh, this, Bristleback, he doesn't even care. He has a half HP right now, but single-handedly, he's kept the entire Scourge team at half HP. The Tombstone gets destroyed right now. They really want to bring down the Bristleback. Bristleback at very, very low HP, but you know he's going to turn back. You know he's going to come back, excuse me. Yeah, he's going to run in with uh, 200 HP and try to defend at this point. You got to keep in mind, this is only Potom and Bristle against five heroes. They're defending so well just with two versus five. And you can see the power of Bristleback, really. Crystal Maiden's going to TP in, drop off a note. I think that should be the end of the push and even if the Scourge got the tower and even if they get like one or two kill It's not gonna be worth it because they have wasted uh, so much time right now They're trying to nuke down this bristle back still not working out pot I'm doing so much DPS and that's the power of picking up early treads Oh, there's an arrow and there's that bristle back coming in with so many cool spray two kills dropped off right now Three kills gonna be played by the bristle back bristle back running in right now. He still have two earned charge Oh, he's gonna be bristle back Yes! A Phonic Shield being dropped on him right now. He is going to be absolutely fine. Hanging around with 100 HP, Vanguard Regen, Bristleback. A Phonic Shield healing from the uh, Lord of Vernish. He is absolutely okay right now. And Scourge just realized this game got so difficult. This Scourge definitely did a little bit more early game lineup. But I feel Miniski so smart. So smart on item choices. So smart on hero picks. I'm not too sure whether it's a coincidence. Uh, I, I assume not because you know these guys are pro teams. So I assume that they're just making smart decisions. The hero picks off the bench right there. Very offensively played uh, by who is this? RG. RG, RG. Uh, the, the reason that the bottom is doing so well right now is they need the early game DPS to really stop the push. Of course, Bristleback is a huge source of early game DPS, but having the bottom along is going to be good as well. Plus 28 on the bottom 
12 minutes into the game. This is absolutely ridiculous. Generally on, on Potom you get a phase boot and that's it. Uh, but this game he's getting so much attack speed and uh, he's dishing out the damage as he, if you see uh, in the last couple of engagement. So Scourge what they need to do right now is just turtle. And it's it's very odd thing to say your early game pushing lineup but you have to turtle. And again you need to turtle for those experience. You have to ward up and turtle. It's going to be difficult because you're up against a Furion, you're up against a Potom which are natural very strong gankers. Uh, so you gotta just turtle like absolute champs, get those level 12 and maybe all of your heroes get some very early game items, finish your Django, finish your Mecha, finish your Vlad, get Vit Booster on everyone if you can and go for a, like a suicide mid push. That's the only time, only chance you will win the game. Uh, but it really depends on them making the correct strategical mistake, not getting ganked off, having strong map awareness and that relies on the Sentinel not doing anything for the next 10 minutes which I don't think they will do that. Bristleback right now having ridiculous... Ooh. Okay, this is. I, I'm just gonna give the viewers a second to think about why this is the worst item choice in Dota. I cannot think of another item choice as as bad as this. You guys saw it? Okay. Where to start, right? If you want the face ability to give you the mobility, you're not going to get it because you're going to be casting a spell every two seconds. You're going to be spamming. Oh, they got a kill on the bottom. So my apology. I'm missing that. So bottom probably dived in as you see Pugna very low HP. As we see a little bit more dive going on as well. These Bristleback just doesn't care right now. A Phonic Shield being dropped on him. You can see his HP actually went up there if you were paying really much attention. And wow, look at those damage on the cool spray. Double kill time as he is diving like non-stop open cast it, but not just, just doing a little bit of damage. Trying to chase down the Dirge. Dirge might just get a like, couple more right clicks, but he's healing so much right now. They cannot bring down this Bristleback who's just dying. Diving in like crazy. Is he going to TP out just fine right now? He is going to make it out alive. Man, this I love seeing Bristleback going absolutely ball deep. But let's go back to his really worst item choice of all time. If you want it for the phase ability, it's never going to happen. Because whenever you cast a spell, it's going to cancel your phase. And uh, you're going to be casting spell every two seconds. There's no reason not to spam a cool spray. As we see, Arrow from the bottom comes and gets one kill right now. Working on the pug now for the second kill. He has to leap uh, off cooldown, on cooldown. He can't use it at this point. Trying to chase someone down. Juggernaut comes in with a huge spin. Trying to, He doesn't have to ult anymore. And here we go. The decrep being casted on the uh, bottom. Bottom uh, very, very low around. Staying around with HP. We have the support in from the Prophet with the Mecha. So they're going to continue with this push. And this <laughs> Juggernaut have to run away below. Below his tower, man. This bottom leading his team, playing absolutely aggressively, and uh, wow, they could do it because they're leading so much in levels. Level six juggernaut to a level eleven bottom. Look at those hits. It is just absolutely hurting right now. Juggernaut gets chased down. Pugna try to TP in, but he's got to be very careful as well. As we see, Manta style being complete on the uh, bottom plus forty-two damage, and this Pugna just died. Easy. And we have you have the opening dropped on the crystal man. Man, this is just this is this is such a one-sided game. 23. But I'm still glad that we see such an interesting lineup on both sides and such a very interesting strategy. But let's yeah, let's go back to this bristle back bad I'm choice. Okay, for the third time, if you, you want to get this phase speed for the phase ability. You're not gonna ever gonna use the phase ability because you're gonna be spamming cool spray. The only thing that's gonna be good for that's using for the phase ability is just like running from one part of the map to another, not an engagement. But I don't think that's really a good re good enough reason to get the phase ability on the phase speed. Of course, it does give you plus 24 damage, which can be very nice. But on Bristleback, the big source of your damage is again from the cool spray. You're not gonna be doing a lot of right click. I mean, you can of course with your ult, uh, and in fact that you know you run fast as heck. So, I mean, you can do a little bit more right click, but I think the better item to get here is the, of course, a strength tread or, or even the intrets for the extra mana. Or even, uh, I guess you could even get arcane boots to help out your team a little bit, but phase boot is probably like the worst item. Co like, you could get, you could get Maelstrom on Techie and that will be better than this. Like, really. Seriously. It's just, yeah. Okay, I I'm done with that item. Hope you guys actually see, see how, like, yeah. Okay, it's, it's a little bit bad. But let's look on the bot lane right now. We have the push being led by the Furion. We have the Django. We have the Mecha. We have the Midas and the Plate Mail. Damn, these guys are ridiculously farmed. And the score is 21 to 3. They are leading by 6 towers almost. Uh, so that's why, like, everything just going well uh, for Mineski right now. 
And really, I, I just feel like it was a little bit misplay in terms of devoting too much attention as we see Long Arrow is going to miss. And what I mean by devoting too much attention to the bot lane was they, the Dirge had to TP down, the Pugna uh, came from the mid to the bot lane, and really, they lost the lane there because of Bristleback and because of Abaddon is just absolutely insane. So the two reasons, uh, or two things I want to say so far. If you don't pick enough stuns, you are going to be in trouble as evident in this game. Even though they have a really cool strat, they don't have enough stun to make it work. And secondly, without without stuns, Bristleback and Abaddon, beautiful heroes. Because what are you going to do with them? They will just heal non-stop, non-stop. And I am really curious whether they pick that for a... Uh, uh, for kind of a uh, what you call it a dual heal oh, man they are trying to bring down this bottom do they have a swap do they no no swap of course because it's a level freaking five vengeful spirit man the lack of level is just hurting him so much level six you're gonna I'm gonna just pull up the menu here and uh, 10 13 13 13 8 Arrow's gonna hit on the Venge. Venge gonna go down right before the fight happens. The, the, the shield on the Bristle, and he just doesn't even care at this point. Runs in. We have a port in from Furion. Sprout gets through here right now. These three arrows are going down right off the bat. Uh, and, and he is gonna go just chasing the fountain like an absolute champ. The shield is gonna get destroyed. Right click comes in, and you know what? He's not phasing right now. Guess what? Because the phase is a bad. I'm just saying. Just saying right now. The entire Scourge team getting wiped. They might even get their fountain destroyed. No, they don't have a the Sentinel doesn't have a DPS right now. They do have a pot. Uh, they do have a a CN that can freeze a fountain. They're hovering around like crazy, trying to go for it. Uh, but uh, nope. Are they are they really gonna do this? Are they gonna just fountain farm? <laughs> Look at this Brizzo. He's got he's turning around like he. Oh this. Oh no, Pugna dies to the bottom. Oh, they they might actually nuke down bottom right now. No, bottom very very low. But they have a shop. They could buy salves. They have urn. Look at that SMY on the bottom. Screw the Manta. I want early game DPS. Quill spray. Just just like no MPs MP. Where yet? Oh man, I wish he's. I wish he's turn his back to that illuminate. Like, you see, his HP just went up. You saw that? The HP went up. That is the double. The double. Uh, what you call it? Yeah, there's a shooting call and rightfully so. Yeah, that's that's a game left. Okay. Wow, what a, what a game. 27-3. And if you guys dislike one side game, I sometimes dislike one side game too. But this game is completely worth it because when do you ever see a bristleback and a badden? A juggernaut first pick, right? I mean these these are some very novelty heroes. But this is also the reason why we don't see some of these novelty hero play uh, play because it just doesn't work that well sometimes but i hope you guys enjoyed this commentary and i will be coming you guys with more commentaries in the very near future maybe like tomorrow uh, so if you guys have any criticism on how i could improve my commentary styles etc etc let me know and i will try to work on it and that's it hope you guys enjoyed this commentary until next time this is luminous signing off see you guys